do you know your best friend's name? That's an easy one, right? But now, do you know their phone number and their address by heart? This is precisely the problem that needs to be solved in a microservices environment when a service needs to communicate directly with another service. I have built and maintained microservices systems and in this video, I'll show you how microservices know where to send a request, the challenges of keeping track of service running in a dynamic environment, and the strategies to solve that problem. This video is part of a 10 episode series on microservices communication, and I highly recommend you watch the entire series to get the full picture of this complex topic. The link in the description. In a modern architecture, services run in a cloud environment and get their IP address dynamically assigned. And a service can have multiple instances running at the same time. So let's take a common service with three instances running and each instance has its own IP address. When we have a lot of people posting comments on our platform, we can increase the number of instances and then when we have less traffic, we can shut down some instances. This means that the IP addresses that were once assigned to those running instances will no longer point to a running service. In a dynamic environment, if you have a video service that needs to send a request to the common service, how does it know what IP address to use? And how does it know that the IP is even pointing to a running instance? So to address that, we need a place where we keep track of all the active service instances and their IP addresses. This is called a service registry. The service registry is like a contact list on your phone. In your phone contact list, you have a list of names associated with phone numbers. Some of your contacts might have multiple phone numbers. The service registry has a list of service names associated with their IP addresses. And a service that has multiple instances will have multiple IP addresses associated with it. In our example, you will have a service registry with the video service and the comment service listed. And for the comment service, you will have three instances listed with their IP addresses. Having a service registry is only the first step. If a service A wants to send a request to a service B, it still doesn't know where to send it. It needs some help from the service registry to get a valid address. So there are two strategies to get the address. In the first strategy, the client service gets the address directly from the service registry. It's like you opening your contact list on your phone and trying to find your friend's phone number. This strategy is called client-side discovery. The principle is simple, but it means that each service needs to have some extra logic to get the addresses from the service registry. You might be able to use existing libraries or shared code to do that, but in some cases, you might need to implement that logic yourself or each team might need to implement it differently, especially if they use a different programming language or different frameworks. For the second strategy, instead of you opening your contact list, you could use the voice assistant on your phone and ask it to call your friends. For example, hey voice assistant, call James. So the voice assistant will look up the phone number in your contact list and make the call for you. All you need to know is that you have a friend called James and you want to call him. In this second strategy, the client service goes through a third party to send their request. And the third party will take care of getting the address from the service registry and routing the request to the downstream target service instance. There is not much to do for the client, but the counterpart is that there is an additional infrastructure to set up and manage. The name for this strategy is server side discovery. But regardless of the strategy you use, there is still one major problem to solve. In our example, we have three common service instance running and they are correctly listed in the service registry. But remember, we are in a dynamic environment. New instances get deployed and others are shut down. So when a new instance starts, how does the service registry knows about it? And when an instance shuts down, how does the service registry is made aware? So if you want to keep your friendships alive, it's a good idea to keep your friends' contacts details up to date. It's the same with a service registry. If you want your system to work properly, you need to keep your service registry up to date. And to keep the registry up to date, you have two main strategies to choose from. The first strategy is to let each service instance register itself with the service registry. 
This is called self-registration. When a new instance starts, it will register itself with the service registry and potentially when it shuts down, it can unregister itself from the service registry. Although that wouldn't work if the service crashes unexpectedly without even having the time to unregister itself. A better option to detect if service instances are still active is to use either a health check endpoint or a heartbeat endpoint. If you use health check endpoints, the service registry will periodically call those health check endpoints to make sure that the registered instances are still alive. And if you use a heartbeat endpoint in the registry, the service instances running will periodically call the heartbeat endpoint to let the service registry know that they are still alive and active. If the service registry doesn't receive a heartbeat call from a given instance registered for a certain amount of time, it will assume that the service instance is dead and it will remove it from the registry. With this strategy, the service instances have to do some extra work and know about the service registry. In the alternative strategy, we use a registrar to do the registration. So the registrar will observe the service instances running and it will register them with the service registry. And when an instance shuts down, the registrar will unregister it from the service registry. This strategy is called third party registration. In this strategy, the service instance doesn't need to know about the service registry and it doesn't need to know how to register and unregister itself. The heavy lifting is done by the registrar. But if you use Kubernetes, for example, you get service discovery for free. So the service registry, the registrar, and the request routing are all handled by the platform. You just need to deploy or shut down your services instances and the platform will take care of everything else. But that implies that all your services are deployed through the same platform. But if you have services deployed in different environments, you will need to implement the service discovery yourself and use tools such as Netflix Eureka or Apache Zookeeper. Knowing where to send the request is great, but how you send the request can have a huge impact on the resilience and scalability of your system. You can watch this next video to learn about the communication style that allows your system to continue working even if some parts are down.